Today is exciting because we are switching over our family altar from Yule to Immel and I'm going to bring y'all along for the ride. <laughs> Let's go. And thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me today and my two cold sores <laughs> for my returning friends hi I hope you're doing well and for my new friends if you don't know I am on an adventure to leave 100 pounds in my past I also happen to be someone who follows a pagan spirituality and I like to share a little bit of that as well so if any of that sounds fun please be sure and subscribe before you leave. Also, give this video a like if you find it at all interesting. Thank you so much if you do. I am upstairs in the room of requirement. I had to grab a couple of things. So now let us venture down to the Harry Potter closet and I will show you how I start the process of switching altars over. First, we need to take a little kitty pit stop. Hi, boo. As we're walking by, this is our Yule altar, all in its used up glory. Fun fact, this is almost 100 years old. Oh, love it. Anyway, this is what we're changing over today. We got to keep going. As we move through the house, we get to the basement door. And that's where we're going. Oh, turn on the light. It's the kid cave. <laughs> and uh, here's the exposure of my shame. The box is on the treadmill. That's future LaFay's problem. First place we're headed is right there. Quick snapshot of the well-loved kid cave. Okay, let me show you what's going on in here. Welcome to LaFay's armoire of random decor. <laughs> this is uh, collecting. This is collecting at its best for many different reasons. Some of it is just things that I like. A lot of this is from when I designed a mad tea party in the Tim Burton aesthetic for my brother and sister-in-law's wedding shower. So there's a lot of that here, a lot of candles and random bits. I really do hope that the furnace isn't too loud since it is on. So, all right, I want to collect the things that I think I am going to want to add into not only the altar, but around the house. I kind of like to switch up some of the, the home decor with the Sabbaths as well, since Sabbaths follow the seasons. Thank you, washer. <laughs> and I like to keep Imolk rather simple. So what I'm going to do now is go sifting through all of this and I want to try and pull out all of my candles that can actually burn. I have a mix of real candles, gotta keep this, as well as faux candles that are battery operated. And this year I want to burn up my candles. So that's the goal starting with Imolk. I'm going to look through all of my things here and grab lots of candles. So here we go. All right, I have a full basket of what I am fairly certain is all of the burnable candles that I have here in the cabinet. I also I'm going to want to get a few candle holders because I know that I have some gold ones up around the house and I just decided now in this moment that I want to switch to silver ones entirely for this next Sabbath season. So let me see what I can find. I have candle holders, probably more than enough. I definitely have more than enough candles. And the last thing I'm going to grab from here is one of these bowls that I have. This is something that I think was just thrifted. It might've been my grandmother's. I'm, I'm kind of thinking though that it was thrifted and I, I'm gonna use this on the altar. Okay, we have everything we need from the decor armoire. 
So now I'm going to take you to the Harry Potter closet. All right. Okay, dearies, welcome to my Harry Potter closet. The reason it is the Harry Potter closet is because it is under the stairs. Ha ha ha. Can you hear the dog upstairs? He knows I'm down here and he doesn't like it. <laughs> Please bear with me. I have a system of organization for the Sabbath switch outs on the altar and it's this stuff right here. I have these small white containers that have base decor for every Sabbath. Some are more full than others because like I talked about in my last video, I am a bad pagan and I have not done a good job of honoring each Sabbath as its own and I am changing that this year. And I've already anticipated that change by creating an organizational solution to what I know is coming at me. So what I have to do right now is get the Yule bins out so I can take down the Yule altar and grab the Imolk bin as well. And then we're going to head back up into the living room. Here we go. Apparently I love myself because I have Imolk right here on top. Thank you, Pass Lafay, for having your own back. We have Imolk and Yule, so let me just stick this one back up here and we'll head out. First thing I like to do is a little smoke cleansing. So really, just burn a couple incense as an offering. And to reset the air. And now it's time to get all this off. Traditionally, at this point, the altar would actually come down to just being bare and naked, and I would wash it off. However, Imolk white is the basis of my color scheme and it's not one of the main correspondence colors of the Sabbath so I'm going to leave this white tablecloth just as it is and I'm going to start putting the altar together before I do that shout out to me mom she made this plastic canvas tissue holder I gave her what what I needed the Bridget cross and told her the colors that I wanted, and she made this. Isn't it just delightful? She also has made coasters to match, so I'll be getting those later today, maybe tomorrow. Okay, let's get this altar together. this year, 2020's Imok Altar for my family. If you're curious, check with the All Seeing Eye and they will tell you what our, our Imok Altar for 2019 looked like since that is the last Imok Altar that I shared here on this channel. Now in my vision board video that I posted earlier this week, again, check with the All Seeing Eye, I mentioned how I I'm going to be more intentional about celebrating each Sabbath with my family. And that starts with Imolk. Imolk is February 2nd. And over the course of this month, I have been reflecting and planning and decide, deciding how I am going to approach each Sabbath. 
and something that I have decided that is non-negotiable with myself is to keep each Sabbath as simple as possible because I don't want to overwhelm myself. It doesn't have to be complicated and massive and big in order to be meaningful. To be meaningful, it simply needs to be intentional. To help me with my intention, I have employed books like I do. Please allow me to share them with you. The first book that I indulged in, none of this is sponsored by the way. I have purchased all of these with my own money or been gifted them. The first book is the Llewellyn's Imolk book and they have a small like a collection, one for each Sabbath and I have purchased Imolk, Ostara, and Beltane to start me off and when the time comes I will purchase three more things like that. This book was so fun to read and as you can see I have highlights in here and notes and it this book really helped me to have a better understanding of the Sabbath. Please let me know in the section beyond the veil would you like me to do an Imolk overview and share what it is I've learned about the Sabbath? I do know or I suspect that many of my friends are not pagan. So are you just like, boom, totally confused? Let me know in the section behind the veil if you want me to explain more in depth about Imolk. The other two books that I have been looking at too are the Llewellyn. Uh, so there's a theme. <laughs> I love Llewellyn stuff. Uh, the, the Almanacs. I have 2019 and 2021. I do not have 2020 because 2020. I love the almanacs and I'm not sure if I've had any prior to 2019 but it was in 2019 that I decided I'm going to keep them forever and ever and ever so almanacs always always a good thing to have on hand a fun book that I purchased many years ago and I have not given it good use is this Sabbath entertaining book can you believe that there is an actual like cookbook like that's a cookbook and it has uh just observances and crafts and it is it is really cool and I have not put it to good use I haven't given myself the time or the moments to connect with this book that's going to change for Imolk because the the menu for Imolk is pretty perfect for the way that we like to eat so the menu that is in here is an assorted cheese platter which in my head is a charcuterie board right and we're all eating those right now then a winter greens with feta salad so we'll just have a salad homemade cream of potato soup yes love it I make that not all the time but it's something that we do love to make so I will make that again there is also a buttermilk loaf with herb butter so yes we will be making that as well and it says coconut extra moist angel food cake. We don't do coconut, but I'll make a pound cake or something. So this menu is what we are going to be enjoying. And we will actually be observing February 1st, not February 2nd, because that's the way that our schedules work the best. And the really cool thing about being a pagan is you kind of just make it work. So the... Seb Entertaining Book, a lot of what we're doing this year is being pulled from here. Another book that I've loved for years since Little Prince was but a wee babe is the Celebrating the Great Mother book. I'm not sure if I'm pulling anything from here this year, but it's one book that I'm always referencing. I cannot talk about Celebrating Imolk without talking about two of our favorite family traditions, and that is Rupert's Tales. This is, it's a children's book. It's poems for each, poem stories for each Sabbath. And we have been reading these with Little Prince since he was a baby. And it's something that we look forward to every Sabbath, sitting down and reading a Rupert's Tale. And the same goes for Puka Pages. Puka Pages is a free online magazine for pagan kids and pagan families. Today, I printed out the Imolk edition, which just came out this week. And Little Prince and I are looking forward to start reading 
these over the weekend because the celebration is kind of going to last all weekend and we're very much looking forward to it. Little Prince is at a stage where he's really asking a lot of questions and is really wanting to know more about why each Sabbath really matters. Of course, I will have links to all of those resources in the section Beyond the Veil. Again, I am not affiliated, not sponsored. I am not that important, dearies. <laughs> so these are just things that I have collected throughout my years, and I hope that they are of use to you if you are of the pagan persuasion. Off the top of my head, I am not quite sure what my next video is, but I'm sure it'll be something. Definitely there'll be a progress report thrown in here somewhere. With all of that said, I will see you in the next one. Bye, dearies.